Hey, hey, good morning. Your possible podcast here, Bradley Shrub, and I've got a special episode this week. In fact, it's not even Thursday, I know. It's so crazy. Yet, I just, I, I couldn't help it. I'm in, I'm now in South Lake Tahoe, just over the Nevada border, and one of uh, the things I have to do, <laughs> I say have to because I do have to, I have to do on this, on this vacation here is my sister. So I, I move a lot, right? And I have stuff. I, I mean, I can't even keep track of where it all is. I have stuff all over the place in many different houses. I have many different people. And uh, they, they slowly giving it back to me. So my sister... She, we just met her, and she had a car, and I have a plane, and uh, she gave me, among other things, a, a four uh, photo albums, and my job is to look through them and see if I want to keep them, and they're, I, I think my mom made most of them, and yet I just looked through one this morning, and I see it's my mom made a photo album of my, our Saskia and my world trip. I didn't really, I don't really remember her even doing this. So I just found it. And what's really cool is that it's sort of her perspective on the thing and what she, the photos she chooses to use. But what I really want to relate back to is last week where the the Repossible podcast and Thursday Thunder was about journaling and uh, note-taking, writing, uh, daily habits of, of writing down your experiences and what you're doing and how important that is. And frankly... It's been a year since I stopped writing every day, and I think I'm finally feeling the aftershocks because I'm going to read a passage here from the photo album that, I mean, it's it's extremely personal. I'm happy to read it to you, dear listener, but you'll see. <laughs> you'll see why it's good to remember those times, and how do we remember them? Again, writer guy here, I think we can write them down, but it could be audio, could be video, could be could be a podcast. What if what if you made a podcast, a weekly podcast, just for yourself? What if the the audience was you? What if the what if you did a weekly video address and the audience is you? The only reason you're doing it is sort of journaling. Okay. Remember how I learn by doing, I learn by creating, it happens and that's how I get the information out, how it comes to me. So I hadn't thought of that before I hit record, and now saying it out loud as, as I'm talking through it here to myself, I'm, by the way, I'm outside, I think most of the family we're visiting is asleep, and I'm outside recording, uh, I have, there's trees just everywhere, you'll hopefully hear the birds and the other critters that are, and chipmunks make a lot of noise, they're great, and I'm sitting here reading this photo album, so I want to read this passage. That was that my mom put as the last page of our world trip when Saskia and I first met. We went on a trip around the world for a year, went to Africa for six months and Asia for six months. And she picked this excerpt. It's just a paragraph. It's a long paragraph. But I'm going to read it here as an example. And part of what I'm doing is I'm doing this for myself. And that's what I would like you to take from this is the, sorry, airplane. Um, not the goal of the big box, not the goal of the big recognition or who the audience is or how many followers or listeners or viewers or readers you have, but you really only need one reader and viewer and listener. It's, and it's you. You're doing this for yourself. You're doing this for your own growth, your own personal development, your own progress for measuring your progress. And I think it's, it's also important to not just do the up times, but the down times. So... Here we go. I'm going to read this excerpt from, uh, it's, I, I wrote it at the, t- I guess, towards the end of our trip. And we were in Mongolia and we're on a horseback tour or something. And in case it's not clear, I don't really like horses. And partly I have to say I'm biased where we were on a horse trip in Yosemite and, and this stupid horse threw my mom off of a bridge because it got spooked. And almost landed on my mom. Would have killed her. My mom had broken ribs and bruised everything. And it was awful. So I'm a little biased against horses. So here we go. We're in Mongolia. And the title is The Last 
letter. It's towards the end of our trip. Remember, this, we're in like month 11 of our trip. Here we go. The day was fresh, clear, and alive. Saskia was ecstatic on the horses, galloping, galloping along the steppes of the Mongolian countryside, laughing like a lunatic as I talked rationally with my idiot monster beast. When you stop and think about it, it sounds pretty wild. The steppes of Mongolia. Saskia was radiant. Her smile was captivating, and as I struggled to gain control of my horse, my mind froze in time, as if to save it. I didn't like the horse torture massage stuff much, but I liked to watch her have fun. She didn't mind going fast and talked to the other riders about where they were from and whatnot. I talked to my horse about slowing down and told him to watch how some of the other nice horsies were going slow and that they looked like they were having a very good time. I looked down at my stupid cow and was frustrated. I looked over at Saskia bouncing along like some laundry detergent ad for happy people who just did their wash and then ride horses. And I realized how happy she makes me. She looks like she knows what she's doing, prancing along like an antelope and might even be enjoying it. I feel like I'm riding a motorcycle with octagonal wheels made of wood and no handlebars. There have been moments along the way when I think that not only am I the most fortunate that I have ever been, but that I am the most content, breathing being on the planet. I take a look at Saskia and a glance at my surroundings and I think to myself that I wouldn't care if I spent the rest of my life as a street sweeper in Bangladesh as long as we stayed together. Maybe we could even be assigned to the same street. I looked around into the lush green carpet of the Mongolian countryside, and I'm glad to be alive. I feel life from every pore of my skin and enjoy it like a little boy on Christmas morning. The tears well up, and I want to scream as loud as I can. I feel on top of the world, sitting on a furry mountain somewhere in Mongolia, south of Siberia, north of China, and my dreams have fallen into my lap like snowflakes. They fall gently and silently, and I catch them effortlessly, for the work has been done, and I enjoy a moment of reward. A lightning bolt with no thunder cuts through my heart, leaving a small scar, not of pain, on the contrary, a scar to remind me of the heights of bliss, and that, like pain and sadness, it knows no limits. Other magical spots flash in the sky like a heavenly slideshow. Serengeti, Zanzibar, Likoma, Chumanimani, Laos, the Great Wall, and now here, Mongolia. There's a simple formula to explain the bliss, but you don't find it in the best of guidebooks. It's everywhere, yet it's hard to find. It's a filter that renders everything more colorful, turns horrendous situations into a good laugh, and exponentially multiplies the pleasure of most everything. I'm simply in love, like I have never known before, hardly knew existed. A love as pure as the cowboy logos are rough, as innocent as a children riding bareback, as crisp as the air, as clear as the blue sky. I sit on top of some green hill in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in Mongolia, and I think, I remember, I dream, I remind, I see, I know. I'm in love. There you have it. If that is not proof positive of writing things down in the moment,
when you feel them the most clearly, the most passionately. I don't know what it is. I don't think I, I could have recalled 75% of what I felt at that point. Yet, having written it down, having etched it in stone for eternity, I have it again. And I can relive it. I can re-feel it. It can rekindle a fire. And I can enjoy it and look back with, with awe and, and praise and delight and joy and and know that I need to keep doing it, that I need to keep the journaling, the writing, the storytelling, keep it short. What was that, five minutes? Just a little element, a little glimpse into the life of a, of a day. Sure, I was on a wor- round the world trip. That's pretty darn exciting. But there are exciting moments in every day, and it doesn't need to be on the steps of Mongolia. So here we go. This is my, my, my mantra, my, my challenge, my, my ask to me, but also to you. To journal, to, to take notes, to, to write it down, to document your, your life at the moment on a, on a daily basis. Maybe, maybe it's 10 words. Maybe it's 10 pages. It doesn't matter the quantity. It doesn't even matter the quality. It's, it's the process. It's the practice. It's the perfect. All right. <sighs> this is the Repossible Podcast coming to you with a special extra episode here from, where are we? I think it's called Stateside, South Lake Tahoe, California. Uh, actually, Nevada. <laughs> Outdoors. And flashing back to the last days of our world trip and relishing in the, the joy and, and love of that time. And as a testimonial to journaling. Okay, signing off from the woods. I'm going to go have some English muffins with peanut butter because that's what I miss. <laughs> All right, take care. See you next week.